channel, this is me, Steve Rude, doing what I do. Drawing, sketching, thinking up new ideas. I'm a Wisconsin kid, born in Madison, and attended art school in Milwaukee before those kind of places got too regimented. What you're looking at here is my morning ritual of warming up in my sketchbook. I like to do it before I start my day by copying someone who's really good. In this case, I'm drawing from a Dean Cornwell painting. Cornwell was called the Dean of Illustrators for a good reason. He was literally as good as one could get in the illustration field. You can see how I weave my pencil with curved shapes and straight lines. This is all something they teach you in good art schools. Here's a good view of where I sit at my drawing table. Things to my left, things to my right, shelves to store things on both sides. Everything I need to make life easy for me. Anyway, let's finish up this uh, Cornwell drawing and we'll take a look at the rest of my studio. There's more files straight ahead. That's my animation table where I'm trying to learn how to make things move right. That's our Nexus character on the disc. More books and files above that. Some bookshelves where I store my art books. Every artist needs bookshelves for their art books. Here's the couch where I sit my live models. More bookshelves. Here's a still life setup. It's always good to keep in practice with that. Here's where I do my oil paintings. Every medium I use has a different setup ready to go when I need it. And down below there, here's some of my recent paintings that I've done on canvas. Here's me relaxing with one of my favorite art books, Creative Illustration by Andrew Loomis. This book came out in the 1940s, right when the war was just ending. I actually call this book the Bible of Illustration. Looking through it, you can see why. It covers everything. Okay, let's get on with the main event. This is where I go over my pencil art with a brush and pen. Here's the reference photo of Supergirl that I'll be working from. And here's how I start blocking in my figures. I start with very simple shapes and slowly get more detailed with it like we see here. You can see how blurry the reference photo is, but I'll try and make do anyway. But first, here are my tools. Two different kinds of ink and a pen and a brush. Simple stuff. Here's the brush ink. It's thicker than the pen ink on the right. There's the pen nib, a Gelat 170, I believe. You can get these older nibs online. The brush is a number six, Lowell Cornell, a really good synthetic brush to ink with. I'm gonna start with a pen nib. I'm going to outline the figure first, and then go back later with some brushwork. There's the pen in action. especially sensitive around faces. It's very easy to screw up a girl's face. Low drying helps. The pen nibs dry much slower than using a brush. And here's me using some flat brushes to fill in the big areas. These are big flat brushes that I'm using for this. Use uh, as big a brush as you need to to uh, get the work done the way you want to. Now comes the smaller brush to uh, get more precision. 
it's amazing what you can do with a good brush. Practice and experience will help you know what to do when you're inking. As you might expect, it's harder than it looks. Look at all the lines you can get with a brush. It's actually more versatile than uh, I would consider a pen nib. Here's uh, a few touches of white out. And it's time to finally sign it. And here's what the finished piece looks like. And a close up of the face. Okay, ready for part two. This is how I would paint the same picture using color. You can see the palette that I'm working on back there. And I'll be using watercolor to start this painting off with. As you can see, I redrew the first picture on some illustration board and I'm ready to go. And here are some really blurry pictures of me working on the picture. I blacken areas with paint just as I do when I'm doing black and white work. I start out loose, but eventually have to tighten things up a lot. Lots of precision involved to make something look real. You can see the two water bowls that I work with. One of these bowls is to wash out the paint with, so it's dirtier, and the other has cleaner water. Here's some non-blurry shots of me working on her cape. Now we're going from transparent paint to more opaque paint by mixing white into my colors. Now let's get back on everyone's favorite part, the face. Most of this painting is done with opaque watercolor. Which drives me nuts because the paint dries darker than when it goes on. You're always having to match colors with a paint that doesn't want to cooperate. Just a few more things to finish up. Here's a shot of the face to see how far it's come. More touches, more touches, always more touches. With a painting, there always seems to be something you're having to refine. Yeah, I turn it upside down a lot. It helps me uh, see a different perspective on what I'm doing. I think every artist does this trick. We need some higher lights on the uh, on the knee, and some refinement on her boots. Let's uh, begin to zoom in here as we examine the almost finished painting. And here's the finish on Supergirl's face. So there you have it two entirely different disciplines that every artist should know. We have the inking, comic book style. And we have paint.
painting and illustration style. These are things that I, I spent my whole life doing and I'm, uh, I'm excited to show you anything I could is to make life easier for your own journey as an artist. And here they are together so you can compare the two. Interesting how I can see those subtle differences in both faces. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun doing it. You guys take care. We'll see you later.